Good, Jordy. Yeah, it was, um, I only worked for a couple hours of vacation. So, uh, it was, uh, for the most part, I was, I was on vacation for the two and a half days. So it was nice. Were you nice skiing? To get away and, yeah. Yeah, nice. I did. I skied, uh, I was a first time skier. I fell six times. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, in the end, I got it and it was great. It was an awesome experience. Steepest mountain you took on? Did they, did they did they color code them over there in yeah, West Virginia? It is it a black? Yeah, hit a black. Yeah, I did. any moguls? There's there's like four different levels. Yeah, easy, uh, a little harder, hard, and then the most difficult. I I uh, I stuck to the easy. Okay, uh, okay. And okay. still that one was difficult for me. Um, so yeah, first time on skis, it was it was a little. A little scary at times. French fried pizza, dude. That's all you got to know. You'll yeah. have a good time. Big yeah. S's. Big S's. <laughs> uh, Ross Dellinger, Sports Illustrated, joining us here. All right, Deli, take me to the uh, the front lines of what you reported on Saturday. You were the first to really kind of put the the the, the entire um, language out from the NCAA to LSU. When you read that report initially, what was your first reaction? Um, Probably that it was about as bad as uh, people at LSU could have imagined. Um, you know, the, the number of major violations, I think it was eight in total. Um, you know, one in football, I think seven in basketball. Um, that, that, you know, and then, of course, the, the big thing, right, was, uh, was the lack of institutional control. And, and that was the fear. Uh, going into this a few years ago, and it's why LSU was trying to separate the football and basketball investigations into two separate cases and have the NCAA um, release, you know, notice of allegations and eventual sanctions separately, uh, handling them separately. And, and that was going to happen. It was on the way to happening. Um, football was on the way to being done in the fall of of 2019 was pretty much complete uh and there was going to be a ruling on football in spring probably of 2020 or summer of 2020 and then of course odell beckham handed out two thousand dollars uh worth of hundred dollar bills on the super dome field after the national championship game in the ncaa then reopened the investigation um and and they got lumped together and when you when you have it lumped together like that, and you have so many major violations, and uh, you you get the the dreaded lack of institutional control, and uh, it's pretty much you know the the worst thing to get, the worst allegation to to get in a notice of allegation. What did you read from football standpoint? How uh, we we know the fallout from basketball, and we'll get to it here shortly with Wade being ousted on Saturday. When you read the news on football, what do you anticipate? Well, the, the difference, you know, there's a few differences between the football and basketball. I mean, obviously football, I think there were three allegations um, in football compared to whatever it is, eight or nine in, in basketball. I think the football had one level one, and then the other two were maybe a level two and a level three. Uh, but the level one in football is a pretty serious level one paying $180,000 to the father of a then recruit and then turn player um, for, for not doing a job, basically. Uh, that's a serious allegation. In, in the other, the second thing that's different about the two football and basketball is that LSU football cooperated, it seemed like, at least according to the NCAA, according to those news of allegations, the LSU football investigation, uh, the, the NCAA got better cooperation from LSU and better production of evidence and, and all that stuff. And then, again, the third difference here, too, is is in the football part, they instituted a self, a self-imposed you know, sanctions, um, recruiting sanctions and scholarship stuff. And then, of course, the, the postseason ban that LSU implemented in 2020 um, on a COVID year when the team, you know, was at the time, I think like four and five or, or something like that. But, uh, so, so those are the, the big differences. I, I, I don't know what more is coming in football. I would assume that 
you might see a little more coming in football. The NCAA, I don't know that they're going to accept. Again, the postseason ban, right, was happened in a COVID year and when LSU ended up finishing the season five and five. I don't know. The NCAA might just lop on another postseason ban. They could, for sure. Uh, they could they could lop on some other scholarship and recruiting stuff, too. Um, I'd expect them to probably do, yeah, a little a little more than um, than what LSU self imposed. So, uh, but it's going to be probably nothing compared to uh, the impending basketball situation. Were you surprised to see LSU accept the bid yesterday? No, no, not really. Um, it's kind of a unique, obviously, situation with uh, with all this. An interim coach, you know, coaches usually don't get fired when their team is about to head into the NCAA tournament. Um, so you don't see a lot of interim coaches coaching in the NCAA tournament. So that should be um, unique. Uh, I, I no, but I'm not. I'm not surprised. Um, I, I think too much time in sports. We uh, we don't think about. We think about the fans or or whatever the media, or whatever we we kind of the coaches and we kind of forget about. Players. I mean, those players in that team um, had a pretty good season, right? And they they fought uh, all year. And, and the reward is an NCAA tournament. Uh, that that only, you know, uh, in major college sports, only about fifty teams get to make. Um, so, uh, it, it it for them, you you want to accept that bid and want to see what they can do. Who knows? You might get on a run, and and uh, might be some kind of magical year I'm, I'm reminded of the mississippi state uh baseball season in 2018 i think or maybe 20 yeah 2018 i believe when uh you know former lsu hitting coach andy canazero who was hired at mississippi state was fired after the first baseball series and the team ended up going to the uh the interim coach ended up taking the team to the uh college world series um and, and so who knows you never know what, what you can get on a run um what could be next, in your opinion, for Will Wade? Five level one violations against Wade levied from the NCAA. What do you expect the punishment to be? And do you think Wade ever coaches in the NCAA again? Not anytime soon, because um, I'm sure that he will probably get a show cause. Um, three years, five years, ten years, I don't know. Um but it'll probably multiple year show cause. And, you know, for those who don't know exactly what that is, it's, it's um, a school, basically you, you put a coach off limits to uh, a school hiring him or her. Uh, and if they do hire him or her, they have to present the reasons to the NCAA and a hearing and all this stuff. And usually schools don't deal with that. Don't, don't fool with that. Um, so it'll it, it'll be I would think it'll be a long time before Will Wade is you know coaches in in college college again. Uh, you know the um, the thing that uh, a lot of the LSU community that I've heard about the last three years or four years or so is is um, everybody does it kind of thing like yeah. right everybody cheats you know in college basketball and. I, I think part of it is very true, right? Uh, that this happens a lot. And we've seen with the FBI stuff, you know, looking into the Kansas and the Duke stuff that's come out with Zion. Like, uh, everybody probably does do it, or, or most teams uh, do do it. However, um, it's, it's how you do it that is important, and who does it that is important. I think we'll wait after all that came out in 2019 when all this stuff came out and came to light in the spring of 2019, I think Will Wade even admitted, actually, and I was there for it at the SEC spring meetings in Destin, he even admitted he was a little too brazen in handling things himself. You just can't do that. And uh, you, you can't be brazen about it, and, and a head coach can't can't do it, so right. to speak. Yes. Um, and that's the difference. I think that's the difference in this case from – a lot of others, and, and let me say one more thing too about this. And it was in the NLA. The timing of, of some of these things um, came after all of that yeah. came to light in the spring of 2019. So if he continued uh, 
he continued to do some of this stuff and uh that just you know that that's that wasn't a wise play yeah i think the 2020 allegation uh versus bill armstrong yeah. the assistant coach was really kind of the what would expedited the process i think once woodward got wind of that and saw that it was it was just a matter of time the first time he saw wade and and armstrong after he read that he fired them yeah, when you when you when you get uh, it's kind of one of the old things, right? When you you stick your your hand on the hot stove and don't do it again, um, but but they they did uh, they did the next year, uh, and yeah, that's uh, uh, well, I think Scott, I think many administrators around the country would probably say that uh, that Scott Woodward probably you know didn't have uh, a lot of choices here if he wanted to. <laughs> to salvage his basketball program from really, really severe sanctions. And I mean, you know, if you keep a coach that um, has these allegations leveled against him and they're proven true, and that's something here that should be mentioned, right? The university will probably fight some of these. Um, and, you know, we'll want to see evidence in a hearing and there'll be a hearing and all that stuff. Um, but you have, there's so many of these, right? And it does seem like the NCAA has bank statements and, in witness testimony, um, they have more. The NCAA, according to the notice of allegations, certainly has more evidence than a lot of people at LSU thought they did. Yeah, right. That that's because last week I, I thought my stance was: look, if they get rid of, rid of Wade, that only means that the stuff on football is bad, and they're using him as a sacrificial lamb. And if the stuff on basketball gets rid of Wade, it's stuff that we don't know about. And really, the most surprising part about all of that, Ross, and you can talk about this more than and better than anyone being a reporter is that that news was kept sealed, that it wasn't leaked to anyone, that nobody had the news of him paying direct deposits to a former player fiance and trying to keep people quiet. I mean, the fact that you just learned about that on Saturday morning was really as shocking as Wade being let go. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's a lot of stuff in there that uh, you know we we didn't know, and uh, I, I don't know that uh, many at LSU uh, even knew or expected to be to be popping up. Um, and it, it not only did it pop up, but it, it does appear that the NCAA is um, quite a bit of evidence, and uh, that's 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 uh, that doesn't bode well for for things. I'm sure the basketball program will be hit uh, with uh, pretty severe recruiting and scholarship sanctions. Plus, I would guess, just guessing, a multiple-year postseason ban situation. And as bad as all that is, you know, if you if you keep the coach, it's probably way, way worse than the NCAA ends up forcing you with a show cause to, to fire the coach anyway I and mean, at the end of all this. Deli, in your relationship building with the new administration around LSU with Woodward and, and everybody up here, have you gotten an idea of the benefit or just relationship between Emmert and Woodward, what it could do for, for LSU? I mean, I know that they stra- they share a very strong personal relationship. Yeah, they do. Yeah, I, I uh, you know, they're, rela- uh, they're related through marriage. I always kind of forget what it is. I think yeah. – uh, the Emmert sons Scott's, married to yeah, Woodward's that's daughter. Right, that's right. That's right. Yeah. So uh, you know they they obviously they're close and it's funny I was uh I was at DC Mardi Gras up here about a month ago um, when five thousand Louisianians come up here to to do Mardi Gras it's like almost a hundred year tradition started by Huey Long it's a big, pretty big deal and the king of DC Mardi Gras is Richard Lipsy obviously a big hmm. uh, LSU uh, influencer and, and a close friend to Woodward and Mark Emmert and lo and behold. Who was at the DC Mardi Gras celebration was Mark Emmer. Um, there with, uh, and Woodward was there and, and Richard Lipsy. So they, they are close. I, I don't, I don't know, you know, Mark, I don't think gets really involved in enforcement, uh, at all. I'm probably, he probably stays pretty far away from that as far as he possibly can. So I would assume that it would have no bearing on this situation at all. Now, the thing that I think the, their relationship probably helps is is uh, maybe, um, you know, 
information getting to, to LSU administration early yeah. about what's going on, you know, in the investigation and stuff. Uh, maybe they were getting, um, you know, getting some news before others just because of their relationship. But I don't think that their relationship is going to have any impact on, on incoming penalties and sanctions. When do you imagine these be levied? When do you imagine that LSU finds out what the future will look and feel like for their athletic programs? Well, it, it, nothing's done quickly with the NCAA. I think LSU has like several weeks to respond in the and in the NCAA response to LSU's responses. And then a hearing is scheduled and then the hearing happens. And then after the hearing, you get um, a ruling of, of sanctions. So it could be several months. Um. Deli, thank you very much for the time this morning. I know that this has taken up a lot of your time. Uh, what are your assignments for the NCAA tournament? Well, I, unfortunately, I have uh, back-to-back weddings. I have a wedding mm. on the Sweet, Sweet 16 weekend. I have a wedding on the Final Four weekend. Ugh, but I will, be, I will be covering. Uh, oh, I know, I know, I know. Everybody, you know. Her side or your COVID, side? Everybody, Her side or your side? Uh, uh, no, my side. Oh, my okay. side. Oh, yeah. dude. Jesus. I, I know, I know. And the, so the, the funny thing is they're just, they are friends, and both of them are in the sports world. They work <laughs> in the sports world. I'm like, what are y'all doing? You know? <laughs> so, uh, it's vasectomy so, season. But I do, I will be in Pittsburgh this weekend for the for the opening weekend. Okay, uh, more snow. More snow. <laughs> let's, um, uh, let's hope not. Tell Pat Forty I will let Moscona know about his 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 shot to him about the fanboy media line. I know that that was aimed at Moscona, not us. <laughs> I'll pass on the message. Tell him uh, he got us, bro. We know, we know. It's got to be a good feeling for Pat this morning. Uh, good to catch up with you, Deli. Thank you, buddy. All right, all right, guys. See y'all. We'll be back, Pat. We'll there be is back. A, yeah, we ain't we'll going down back. so quietly, Pat. 